Emil Cadillac here with FantasyNation.com. We have two pioneers of fantasy sports from Littleton, Colorado. They actually got into the fantasy business back in the 1980s, which is uh, very early. I'd like to introduce Dan and Kelly Grogan. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. Hi, Emil. Good to see you again. Yep. Yes, it's been a while. And this is Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> this is Dan. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Just... Just thought we clarify that up front. Yeah, might as well get that right. So tell me how you guys got uh, interested when you were young about football, or if you did at all. Well, I, I don't know if our fantasy interests uh, uh, tied back early days, but uh, certainly both Kelly and I played a lot of sports growing up. Uh, and Kelly actually was, was, was on a baseball scholarship up at Colorado State University. So we do have a sports background, and, and um, you know, up back in the uh, just outside of New York City, and so you can't help but be a sports fan if you're living back east, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. So we were just, yeah, we were just fortunate in that uh, our father was transferred out to Colorado. Uh, Dan had gone off to college; he went to the University of Miami, and I was still in high school, so I ended up coming out here to Colorado to finish up high school. Oh. And then, uh, as Dan mentioned, uh, I went up to Colorado State and uh, got a degree up there in marketing and, and played uh, on a baseball scholarship up there for four years. Wow, that's, that's pretty impressive. So when was it that you were introduced to fantasy sports? Well, yeah, first, Dan was actually the first one that uh, heard about it. Well, you know, it was, uh, I think it was around 1984, and a coworker of mine was playing fantasy football, and I was so intrigued. I'd come in on Monday mornings, and he would have the USA uh, T -T Today newspaper out, as you probably recall. <laughs> and uh, he'd be going through the box scores and totaling up points, and I'd ask him, what's going on? What are you doing? And he kind of explained the game to me in a, in a quick way. And so the next year, uh, 1985, Kelly and I got invited to join a league, uh, with a bunch of co-workers that Kelly uh, was with. Yeah, I wonder if that yeah, league's so still going. <laughs> no, not, 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 not so much. Not so much <laughs> now. It was, an oil, it was a, an oil and gas company here in Denver at the time, and that was just before the, uh, everything hit and uh, the oil and gas kind of the bottom fell out. But we ended up um, getting into a, a league, and uh, we thought it was so great. I think the first, we, we didn't do a whole lot of homework, but I think the only magazine we may have brought in there at the time was a magazine called Street and Smith. And uh, uh, we, went, we went into the draft, and uh, that was the beginning of our career in fantasy football. We actually drafted Joe Montana that year. Yeah. And uh, I, th he, I think he was our first pick. And uh, we, you know, we, we felt we knew something about football and all, but as Kelly mentioned, there wasn't a, uh, you know, there certainly weren't any fantasy magazines. There was nothing, and, and the, the the online world had not arrived yet. So we just had a, a magazine, and we went in and just went down the list, like, okay, we, we have to pick a running back here. Let's take uh, Joe Riggs, you know, and so on. But the way we got started was we had, Participated in that draft that night, and about the fourth round, we thought we had a steal. And there was a guy by the name of Paul Johns, wide receiver for Seattle. And so we're looking at the stats, and we're going down, and I look, and I, I said to Kelly, I said, look, this guy scored four touchdowns. He's got some decent yardage, but he only played in seven games. So obviously something went on, and I said, gee, this guy could be a real steal that nobody is aware of. So we take Paul Johns. As soon as we take them, one of the guys in the room, and this happens in fantasy a lot, says, oh, you, you, you guys haven't heard, but Paul Johns is retired. And Paul, Paul Johns, and that's the reason why he only played seven games, that he had a neck injury and was forced to retire from football. So that was the reason we got into fantasy, because we, uh, that night we, we, we left the draft, we sat in the car, and we just said, we can't make mistakes like that. So we said, let's just compile this information for next year. And uh, so we'll, we'll be all set for the draft, and we won't pick retired guys. So uh, have so, you sent Paul Johns a uh, Christmas card at all or anything? A thank you? 
I, I have to tell you, we were still doing the publication uh, several years back, and it was our 25th year. And I contacted Seattle, the, the Seattle Seahawks, to see if Paul Johns was around, uh, if, if they knew where, where he lived and all. And they said, well, actually, he's, he's worked for the Seahawks ever since that injury. And he worked in the, in the PR area of the Seahawks. So, uh, unfortunately, he was on vacation then. But I, I wanted to talk to him. And, and we, 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 we did a story in the publication about exactly that story. And I really wanted to talk to him and have his input, but all, all we did was we, we sent him a copy of the magazine, which came out later, and, and, it, and it referenced him. But it was because of him that we, we got into this. That's incredible. So <laughs> the next year you created, did you create the magazine that next year? I guess it was. Yes. The next year what happened was we were, again, collecting the information for ourselves. But then we, we started receiving some, well, we received a call from somebody w that was in our league, and he heard that we were putting, assembling all this information. So he asked if he could buy it from us. And so he wanted to pay us $10 for our notes, just our notes. These were handwritten notes. <laughs> so then we got the idea was, was that, you know, there's other people out there that would probably benefit from this information. So we put together... Our first magazine essentially was uh, an eight and a half, um, 11 by 17 legal size paper, which we printed off uh, each page. We had a page for each team and basic information on that. And uh, we had stats in there and the whole bit. We paid some uh, woman to type, type it all up for us. Uh, uh, that was on a typewriter, on a too. typewriter. <laughs> And we copied it, and then we took it to a, a local newsstand, and they were like, "Well, what is this?" And he said, "This is a it's a game. You know, it's, it's getting popular. People will really like it." And he said, "Okay, I'll let me take ten copies." And I think we sold it for like ten eight or bucks, eight or bucks so, or yeah. something. So Dan was Dan dropped off the copies, and he said, "Well, I'll, the the owner of the newsstand said, I'll, I'll give you a call in two weeks and let you know how it does." By the time Dan got home, the phone was ringing, and it was the owner of the newsstand, and said, we sold out. Bring more copies. <laughs> you got so, to be kidding me. <laughs> no. So Dan runs down there and, and uh, brings more copies. And we may have had them. We were selling them out of the house uh, in a few uh, local newsstands. And uh, that first year, I think we sold, what, 80? About, about 80 copies. About 80 copies. Um, I tell everybody we made five dollars profit, not counting all the time we put in. <laughs> of course, yeah. Now, so you didn't really have a UPC code or whatever. You just he just did it. No, the next year was the UPC code, but that yeah. was the first magazine, or essentially on the newsstand. Yeah. Did you put a cover on it or anything? Or? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we had it. Was called Player Eval at the time. As, as an evaluation. As an evaluation. <laughs> that was a real catchy name, yeah. too, we recall. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you have like a, a cheat sheet in it or rankings of skill positions? Yes, we did, we did have rankings yeah. in it, yeah. yeah. And that was, the, that was the big thing. You know, back then, Emil, as you remember, you know, if you got into a fantasy draft, you really had to do your homework, you know. Uh, you, there wasn't, it isn't like, it wasn't like it is today where, you know, the best next player comes up on your screen and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, there was a lot of pride involved in playing fantasy and the fact that you didn't want to screw up. You didn't want to, you know, pick a guy that has a, you know, was out for the year and had a broken neck or something. Yeah. And, of course, too, with, uh, with, with the publication, which we went to press with in, like, May, in the drafts in August, uh, you know, there were a lot of changes that had taken place. and We didn't have the online world uh, as we do today. So, I mean, people just had to live with what was there in the public and hopefully pick up uh, any information and build in those few months. So that first mag, uh, it was players analysis. Did You don't still happen to have the cover of that or, the, or a copy of it, do you? Yeah, I think we do. I, I do yeah. have a couple copies, yes. I wouldn't mind at least seeing the cover. Maybe I could put it in with the article. You know, maybe you could oh, yeah. scan it and send it to me. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we can, I think I have, even have one. I can probably send you the whole thing. Oh, that'd be cool. Uh, good copies. 
Um, but, you know, back, back then, everything is timing, you know, because after that first year when we, when we did it on a, uh, as a typewriter, um, you know, our computer started getting a little bit bigger, and, and we ended up uh, buying an Apple computer, and we used a, a Quark program, and we ended up creating the magazine from the Quark program. And we had no no experience in, in uh, publishing or no experience in distribution, um, but we figured we were on to something. And let's just we still had other jobs, so we you know we did this at night, and uh, um, you know the next year it started to grow a little bit. We actually went to a publishing uh, or a printer. And uh, they printed out the, you know, I forget, we had maybe three or 5,000 copies that second year printed. And we, we were off and running them. So that was 87. Did you have a distributor or were you having to make calls? No, we, we ended up uh, finding a, a distributor um, out of Chicago. They weren't a very big distributor. Uh, and we, uh, they were like a, they were a sub to a, one of the bigger bigger distributors out there. Like they were they were providing copies to maybe cable or, or even capital at the time. So uh, we ended up going through them. So we had copies printed, boxed up, sent to them, and then they got them out. So do you remember but, the name of that happened? It was uh, ADS Publisher ADS. Services. Yeah, ADS Publisher Services <laughs> out of uh, yeah. Out of Naperville, Illinois. And the reason they found us was, you know, uh, back in those days, too, Kelly mentioned that we were working other jobs, and we both traveled in our jobs, and every time we'd go into a new, we'd, we'd, we'd open up the yellow pages, look up newsstands, and then make calls and say, would you, would you take 10 copies? And we were doing it on our own, and one of the newsstands happened to be in... Um, Chicago, the Chicago area, and so the Hudson. No, it was, it Hudson. It was near Northwestern University. Yeah. But anyway, um, the owner of this company, the distributor, happened to be in there looking at all the magazines one day, and he sees this thing about fantasy football, and he has no idea what it is. And then he calls us, and, uh, and that's how it got started. And he said, "Gee, I, I think I can take you guys up." You know, I think that first year we went up to about a hundred thousand copies, or somewhere around there. Yeah, then yeah, after that, after the, uh, but it was funny too that, you know, we were still trying to, we, again, we didn't know the distribution business, so we would still call companies, and, and, and uh, uh, I remember calling a, um, a distributor, and I told them about fantasy football, and they said, no, we don't carry, you know, X-rated material, and I'm like, no, no, this is a little different fantasy, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, that's a common mistake way back then, as they thought it was porn or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly. a great start. That's uh, that's fantastic. The um, then you've uh, how you did I don't know what evolved then, but then eventually you got into. Uh, did you do any uh, updates before the internet came along? We yes, we did. Uh, we knew that the cheat sheet. You know, as you know. The, the draft is, was the most fun part of, of, of fantasy at the time. And so we knew that the cheat sheets were, were, were important. So because the magazine would go stale on the newsstand, we knew we had to have something else to go with it. So we started offering a preseason newsletter, which essentially was updated news. And it was a four-week uh, newsletter that went out just prior to the season starting. And uh, that was distributed by fax. And ma we, we and had mail. to mail a few. And, and mail, too. But, when did you but, start uh, that? I remember. Oh, oh geez. That had, that had to be in the late 80s. In late 80s, yeah. yeah, 89, 88, yeah. something like that. It was apparent right away that, you know, the information we were putting out with the magazine, cutting it, you know, we needed updates uh, to occur. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So. Then the internet came along. When did you guys yeah, get into the internet? It? Was kind of a yeah. That was a kind of a funny thing. We have a, a very good friend, Bob Dante, here uh, here in Denver, and he worked for a company called Schlumberger, and he was involved in the IT service of of Schlumberger. And he came to 
goes, one day I over lunch, he goes, you know, this internet thing is going to be really big. He goes, how about I build you a website? <laughs> and we're like, well, what is that? And he goes, no, well, I'll, I'll explain to you. So he said, it'll just be a page, and it'll just be, you know, Grogan's fantasy football on it and stuff, and, and people can see it, but, you know, people will, it, it's going to get big. So he put this page together or a couple pages together on the site. There were very few um, server uh, companies out there. We ended up finding a server in Seattle. And again, this is dial-up. So um, he ended up having a, uh, we had a Grogan's page out there, which we were going to be updating um, uh, with uh, just information, you know, throughout the preseason. And, and one of the things, the problem even with that was, you know, everything was, you know, had to be written in code. And uh, it's not like, you know, today where you can just upload a, a Word document. And, uh, man, it would take hours sometimes changing that information. Can you see the screen? The one thing I re What's that? Can you guys see the screen? Oh, I do see that. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> newsletter, yeah. That's Where'd nice. you find that? Uh, Wayback Machine. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> that was ninety nine. Uh, we did I, I, on your notes. You said you started a, an internet site in ninety one. I didn't know there was any internet sites in ninety one. I you. know, and that was the problem. Nobody else did. You know, no. We, we were out there, we but nobody to, knew it. And we weren't smart enough to get all the uh, dot com names and all that stuff uh, at the time. But. Uh, it, we 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 continued on with the news with the uh, uh, with the website you know, from ninety one and again our buddy uh, Bob would update it all and then when everything kind of broke you know we were right there but the way we looked at it and, and it really occurred to us early on that we could use the website as an extension of the magazine because the selling season of the magazine was only so long and then when we uh, we you know, would update information on the website. We had a preseason newsletter there and an in-season newsletter. You know, we did run into some issues, as as Dan Dan will tell you about or taking a credit card over the internet. That was uh, that was a new thing for us, and even getting a merchant account uh, from a bank uh, was a new, especially with fantasy related yeah. in in the, in the name. You know, banks yeah. weren't very excited about that. So I, I want to harp a little on that 91 uh, website. Was it like, was it like server.net slash Grogan? Yes, absolutely. It was. It was. It was. It was. It was, it was uh, uh, what was the name of that server? It was, uh, again, it was that something dot net. Yeah, it was something dot net. net. But it was yeah. server something something dot net slash Grogan's or something. But, uh, yeah. The site crashed more more often than it was up. You know that was the problem, and as Kelly mentioned, it wasn't a complicated site to begin with. It was just a couple of pages, kind of telling people who we were. But we had gotten a call one day from this advertising agency on the East Coast, and they were going to run an ad for, and it might have been Apple. Kelly and I were talking about it earlier. We couldn't recall exactly. It's so far back, but. They wanted to include our page in their ad, and we thought, we've hit them here. Everyone's going to see Grogan's all over the world, you know, and uh, so they uh, they said, all we want to do is get a screen capture of your page, and we'll, and we'll, and this will happen in a couple of weeks. So we, uh, all of a sudden, a couple of weeks comes, uh, comes along, and we get a call from the company, and they say your site's down, and today's the day we need to do our work and get your get your screen captured. So I'm, I think Kelly was on vacation. Our friend Bob was not around. I'm calling the server up in Seattle. Nobody to help, and it's coming down to the wire. Finally, we come through. Our friend has a backup. We throw it up there, and we and we get the the page up. They capture it, and we think, okay, now this is going to be terrific. We've we've got money coming in, and everyone's going to know about us. We were they they sent us a VHS of the commercial, and we were on there for maybe like six tenths of a second, <laughs> and it and they just said and with this you can do you 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 can get uh, your fantasy information. Boop, there we were, there we were gone, and that was the extent of our ad. Mama, what year was that? Do you remember? That was early in the that was you know. 
probably like nine must have been 92 93 i'm thinking because it was early and we were certainly struggling with the website then yeah so do you think you had the first fantasy website out there i believe we did yeah absolutely you know uh like i said it wasn't wasn't much it was more of a billboard there and uh we were updating the information but it um, wasn't interactive so it wasn't interactive yeah. no that's too bad that the Wayback Machine doesn't go past. I think it goes to 95. It would be great if it went further. Yeah, yeah. Because that's all I got yeah. is that one. So, uh, yeah. let's see, where am I at? I'm mesmerized. So, you put another fantasy magazine out, The Advisor. Yeah, yeah. That was one that, you know, we thought that, one, we were looking at um, the people that didn't want to spend a whole lot of time studying for their fantasy draft so we thought we'd put a, an abridged version of of our main magazine and it kind of evolved into this advisor and it was a, a i think we started out the first first year it may have been 64 pages or something and we had it priced lower and uh um it it kind of took off too and now we had two magazines going and we um uh it we thought it's still serving this, the the one market, but now the market was you know the serious serious fantasy player could get Grogan's and and the uh, the people that didn't have the a whole lot of casual time, player the casual just grab up the grab the advisor and take it right into the draft. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> who was your distributor about? Did you start to get a major distributor by then? Or? That one, yes, that one. Well, we did go through H um, uh, and S uh, or ADS. Um, but then from there we went to cable. No, Time Warner or t Time Warner. Yeah, Time Warner was before cable. And then you went to cable. Yeah, cable was the last one that we were we were dealing with. It was funny. At the, early on, I remember getting a call from Capital, and uh, they didn't know really who we were, and and uh, they just heard about our magazine and wanted to know if they could distribute it, and. Uh, uh, and I didn't, I've never, and I didn't know anything about, you know, the, the dis distribution business. And uh, um, I said, yeah, I'll send you a copy. And I did send him a copy. I never followed up, but I probably should have. That would have, if, if I had followed up with Capital, we would have been with Capital uh, before Time Warner. Yeah, that may have helped. I was with yeah. Cable for a while, and I ended up moving away from him, and it turned out to be a real good thing. Oh, did it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. What is this game, Rush for 2000? I don't remember that. <laughs> well, this was a game that, you know, we thought, you know, is there some game out there that could be, you know, easy to play and uh, that uh, people could play on a weekly basis and, and just have fun with it at a bar? So we came up with this Rush for 2000. Essentially what it was, Emil, was that you pick a running back, one running back a week, and however many yards that running back ran for, that's your current yard position. And you could, and you'd have to pick a different running back each week. And so, uh, if you could, you know, with the combination of running backs, could you get to two thousand yards over a seventeen week, uh, seventeen week uh, NFL season? You know, you know, when you think about it too, I mean, the the NFL, unlike. Uh, Major League Baseball, it really doesn't have a lot of milestones in terms of stats, you know. But 2,000 yards rushing is probably the biggest one. And, and at that time, there were only about five players that had run for 2,000 yards or more in a season. So we came up with the game, as Kelly said, you know, you, you would get however many yards the back you chose each week with the idea you're trying to get above 2,000 or certainly beat everybody else in the league. But... Um, the advertising we did for it, we, uh, the, there was like, I think Barry Sanders, and, um, Terrell uh, D D D Davis, he ran for 2,000. Eric Dickerson. Yeah, so we said, you know, T T Terrell did it, Barry did it, Eric did it, and we all know OJ did it. And You have to think about that one a little bit. <laughs> I remember that. Going yeah. back into the day when OJ, yeah, it was more in the news for non-football stuff. So we ended up um, um, presenting this to a, um, a um, restaurant. restaurant chain here in Denver, and they had um, other locations in other states, and they loved it. 
So, uh, and it wasn't, you know, it was a lot of hands-off work. We, we, you know, updated the information on a weekly basis for them. They would put their, 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 their uh, restaurant standings behind the bar, and patrons would come in and see how they did. So and, you uh, had to keep track of each patron who put their, put their. Uh, yeah, we had yeah. yeah by, yeah by restaurant yeah and so and that was pretty easy you know at that point and uh, so they would just print it off when I'd send it to them and they would put it behind the bar and mm -hmm. and if they did, you know if they were the high week high uh, uh, yardage for the week in that in that restaurant then you know they they got a free beer or something. These were sports bars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea, and I love the 2000 idea. I think that's a real simplistic yeah, yet yeah. Entertain, entertaining because yeah. that's going to keep them watching the games or coming in and putting the Exactly. Pictures. Very easy to play, you know. Yeah. Uh, you had the Thursday night games back then. Did they did they have to pick before Thursday night started, or does it matter? Or was that the I only – the Thursday did. night was the only – maybe it wasn't – it was just the first game of the season. I can't remember. I apologize. I don't know how yeah. that was, how that worked, but – um, yeah, I, I, I don't recall how the Thursday night was affected. Yeah, sorry, I don't remember when that is. Yeah. So, um, you ended up selling to Athlons. Tell me about how that happened. <laughs> well, uh, there was a, a couple, of, over the years, we knew that, uh, you know, the people were interested in the magazine. Um, and, you know, that's how we ended up, uh, we, we had... We connected with a company that was actually in Seoul, South Korea, and uh, called NextGen. They were for a company, and uh, we met them uh, in Honolulu first, and then in Seoul, and then they came to Denver. We we're we we're trying to work together. They thought, and we did too, that there was an opportunity for fantasy sports, particularly uh, fantasy baseball in Seoul, because uh, baseball was real big in South Korea. And uh, but we went down all those roads, and we never, never really developed anything. We just had to, you know, as, as you know too, it got so competitive in fantasy football, fantasy sports, that we just knew we had to find a big partner. Uh, so then we we did. Uh, I I think we may have made a call to uh, Athlon because we knew some people there. I, I know what it was. Uh, they wanted to use our rankings in their magazine one year and uh, uh, we they put them in then they wanted us to do rankings for basketball and and all and uh, that kind of led to some discussions of you know possibly us joining them and that's how that uh, that those discussions got got started they were about the only big publisher sports publisher that uh, was not involved in fantasy at that time Oh. So we thought, boy, this is a real good match for, you know, they were looking and they were out there kicking tires on a bunch of companies at the time, too. And we just happened to fit the bill. I think we were small enough, too, that we were attractive to them. And then also what kind of was kind of funny was the fact that while we were kind of dancing with them, deciding if we were going to be, uh, you know, uh, join them and be a part of them and they would they would acquire us, um, they would ask us to uh, work with them for some of their advertise with some of their advertisers. So as a result, uh, in in uh, the Grogan's fantasy football, the last couple of years, we were having Heine we, we we had Heineken ads in there, and we had some really major um, major sponsors in the mean, and uh, uh, maybe that helped uh, you know the acquisition part of it on Athlon's part too. That definitely is a nice look to have those big ads in there. Yeah. 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 So, um, I'm so going we, to, go ahead. Oh, no, what I was going to say was then we, we started working with Athlon, and uh, um, we worked with them for, what, five or six years? Well, this was, we, uh, we sold to them in 2006. Yeah. And then we uh, stayed on for about four years and then decided it was time to leave. And so uh, we left the business at that time, and that was uh, pretty much the end of our fantasy days, too. Well, yep. we ended up um, a couple years after that. For the next couple of years, uh, I know, uh, I think the next year we ended up um, 
freelancing and writing for, for like some other magazines. Like fanball. Like fanball. Yeah, we did Fanball. Uh, oh. And then there was another one that we wrote with. And remember, Fanball at that time was acquired by Liberty Media. And so there was a lot of uh, uncertainty there. So, uh, But they needed, they needed uh, some experts to come in and help out. So we helped out with them. And, you know, here's, it's funny. We, we've been involved with different games uh, here in Denver. Uh, um, matter of fact, the one, it was uh, Fanatics Only. I don't know if you remember those guys. They they wanted to do a, a, a baseball. Uh, they did a baseball fantasy game on a big national level that was uh, uh, publicized all through ESPN. And, um, uh, you know, it's just been an amazing career. And the fact that I remember on those, we, they brought Dan and I in just to review commercials that were going to be running on ESPN that Bob Euchre would do. And oh. so uh, we pick out our favorite <laughs> commercials. So that's Fantasy fantastic. Really, really good. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 great to review that. Well, Dan, you you got in the Hall of Fame of the Writers Association. Am I correct about that? Yes, yeah, 2012. Now, what? Why didn't you? Why did you leave Kelly out of that? Oh, <laughs> I just got a call one day. The hall called. And, I don't know, maybe it, it might have been related to the fact that we're both with the same company, maybe that we, we've never known, but uh, it, it could have been the fact that they were just going to take one. Yeah, obviously, I think you both deserve it. Uh, so Sorry, Kelly, I don't know how that all works that way, but I'm actually the vice president of the Writers Association since its inception. So Well, maybe you, you, you could work on that for us. <laughs> well, we probably should. I don't understand why that happened that way, but... Uh, it was probably well. Who knows? But anyway, you should. You both deserve it. So, well, so thank you. I do appreciate that. that. So, what's your yes, uh, you. uh, your um, the things you enjoyed the most and enjoyed the least of this whole endeavor into fantasy football, etc. Well, I know for me, you know, the things that I enjoyed the most is is the, is the the friendships and the contacts of people that you know we've made over the years. We have friends currently today that, that we met only through fantasy football. And, uh, I mean, very close friends that we'll go and visit. And we have a very good friend, Paul Shinkawe in Honolulu, Hawaii. And uh, we've been there to visit he and his family. And, and uh, uh, it's just been, uh, the, the friendships have really, really been, been fantastic. And then also, you know, what we've learned, you know, as, as you know, Amo, when you, when you start something from the beginning and, and you're, you're building it up, you know, uh, you're building a company, um, you're calling all the shots. You know if, it's, if this works or if it doesn't work. So I like the, the entrepreneurial uh, aspect of, of the fantasy side. The, the, the things that I, I probably didn't care for as much was, you know, maybe the administrative side, having to deal with distributors, uh, having to deal with uh, just certain things, uh, you know, that are involved with, with uh, the admin side of uh, running a company. You, and, and you can probably um, I, I identify with this too, Amo, but, you know, the distribution side can be a nightmare, and it's not a fun game. And I, I can recall, you know, our, our uh, distributor would call and say, well, we can get you into, let's say, Barnes & Noble back then, and we can get you, you know, 20 copies into 45 stores, but they're going to put you on an end cap. And then I would go into our Barnes & Noble here in town, and we wouldn't be in the end cap. And, we're, and, and, and here we are paying for those things. You know, you're paying for slotting, essentially. And, you're, you know, your fate is left up to the, to the guy who's, who's putting the magazines on the shelf. And, he, you know, there are times that I'd walk into our local grocery store. He'd be putting our magazines up behind... Uh, you know, good housekeeping, you know, and uh, when he would leave, I'd go pull them all out and put them on the front part of the shelf, you know, it just wasn't, and you know, that's one store I'm dealing with, not the thousands that are around the country, so th that was not fun at all. Yeah, the, it's, it's, on top of that, <clears throat> they may be taking the mag off early at one point and, in time. Again, yeah, yeah. There's too many things on the stand, then they, you know, off they go, they don't care. Yeah. yeah, you're exactly right. Well, I remember back then, too, and I don't know if, if you did the same thing, but we had, uh, like, two versions. Two distributions. Two distributions. One would go on in June and stay till you know, uh, say, the end of June, and then we have 
another shipment come in that would be the July and uh, uh, was it just a cover change and a UPC change it was just, yeah. a, just a UPC, UPC change. it wasn't even a cover change oh, yeah they, God. they would come back to us. yeah 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 they were not happy because you know they, they wanted to see a new scene you know they didn't want the same one just repeated but we knew the fantasy market really doesn't I mean you, you certainly don't want to miss the guys who are buying it in June and July but you, you have there in August yeah and so, you know, we would just change the UPC, which was more cost to us as well. How did you learn that? The hard way. You know, yeah. <laughs> I think one time we, we, we got a call and saying that uh, we pulled your magazines, like in August. We're saying this is the prime time, you know. And it was after that we, we took action, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, do you want a quick story about some of that? Right. Yeah. There was a guy, I don't know if you remember, there's a magazine called Fantasy Season. It was a very thin fantasy magazine, hmm. very beautiful cover. And the guy called me and he wanted to sell, and he sent me his, his you know, B&L and all that stuff. And all. The, and I'm looking at this, and he, I said, you're distributing this twice. You can't do that. I mean, a distributor, that's just like absolute nothing. You cannot do that, and a distributor would not let you do that. He goes... Oh, yeah, we just changed the cover and burp, burp, burp. And I'm like, no, you can't do that. He said, yeah, we're doing it. <laughs> so I um, yep. I noticed another competitor like the next year did it. And I was in New York, Manhattan, and sitting with my distributor. And I says, I want to double distribute this magazine. And he said, oh, you can't do that. <laughs> and I said, here, look at this stuff. And they're looking at it. And he says, yeah, you can't do that. And they said they called like the vice president at Curtis at the time who was doing the other <laughs> magazine. Mm -hmm. I think it was Curtis. And they're on the phone and <laughs> he gets off the phone and says, Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So well, you know, we'd started doing it. And I'll tell you what, you probably know I mean that 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 kept the business alive. Because these stupid it, it distributors yeah, do it. they would if you put something on July one, the tenth of August, they're gone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, it and that's when your selling the season kicks in. Yeah, yeah but you didn't it. want to put it out on August 1st because you wanted to get the July. <clears throat> and uh, we still do that, but we actually we actually modify the, the version. We, we freshen it up a bit and change the rankings and refresh, yeah. and, you know, things in it. So it is a different thing, but probably 80% is, is the same. But I, I don't know if the distributors, back then the, the wholesalers and distributors were, the whole system was crazy because they, they just were so arrogant because I guess they were making so much money they didn't care. They didn't think about, let's, let's see if we can modify how we do the business until they started to get a little hungrier. I don't know if they ever figured it out, but they never did anything about it. I, I think it's because their systems go back to the Civil War. Yeah. You know, they're so old and they're stuck in their ways. And, and for people to come along and say, we need this to happen, you know, uh, they have to jump through a bunch of hoops to see if they can even do it. Yeah, yeah I remember, too, the fact, yeah, I remember, too, early on, you know, they would say, uh, uh, you know, we returned and destroyed, you know, 500 copies. And I'll say, well, what, what is the proof that you destroyed them? And they're saying, uh, well, it's, it's my, my word. <laughs> it's my word. Yeah. And then when we, then when they said, well, you can have the mastheads, because that, it's, but it's going to charge you twenty. They're going to charge it, you know, ten cents per masthead or whatever it was. So you know, it was like really, really crazy, hmm. crazy industry back then. Yeah, you really didn't know whether they were just what what they were doing. It was really bad. No. What's this thing about Walter yeah. Payton and Willie Gold helping you with your? Uh, your <laughs> oh, that was a funny one. <laughs> that was a funny one. You know, back in back in the day that, you know, it's not like today where ESPN and NFL Network, you could go online or go and get any any information that you wanted. Um, we, the way we got our information was, well, we, we kept all the stats by hand uh, for every NFL game. But uh, we would call reporters. We called our reporters who had, were customers of ours in all the NFL cities. And so we had those personal reporters, but also occasionally call the NFL team themselves. And one day, um, uh, Dan and I, we had Willie Galt on our team. And so, uh, but 
we weren't sure if he was going to play that week. So I called the NF I called the Chicago Bears and read that Walter Payton, believe it or not, was answering the phone for a secretary who was not getting a lunch break uh, on this one day. And so Walter would have a phone for like a half hour so this lady could get something to eat. That's the kind of guy he was. And he answers the phone. And he, you know, Walter Payton, I don't know if you recall, but he had a real high voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like, <laughs> Chicago Bears? You know, and I said, Walter? And he said, yeah. And I told him who I was, and I was from Denver. And I said, I have Willie Galt uh, on my fantasy team. I need to know if he's going to play this week. And he goes, hold on. And then the next guy picks up the phone. It's Dan Hampton um, saying, locker room. And uh, I said, Dan? And he goes, yes. And I told him the story. And he's like, wait a second. Wait. And then he calls Willie over and puts Willie on the phone. And I tell him the whole story about, you know, our fantasy team, and he's on our team. And he says, well, I just got out of a meeting with Coach Dickett, and I'm starting on Sunday. And I said, great, thank you. I said, I owe you big time. Anyway, we started him, and he scored that for us. So that was the, uh, the Chicago Bears story. <laughs> That's a great story. I don't recall <laughs> that one. And then again, I'm old, and I don't remember. Oh, by the way, uh, did you guys ever go to the um, – Fantasy Insights, uh, Fantasy Sports Convention in Tropicana in 1998. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We were there. Yes. Well, wait, wait. No, no. Not at the Tropicana. We were at the oh, at the um, at the one in St. Pete. In St. Pete, which I, I think, think was later. Yes, so you guys, you're talking uh, about Tropicana Stadium. No, Tropicana Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas. I oh, think, yeah. oh, wait. I back up. Yeah, we we were at that one. Uh, that's the one where there were more vendors than there were attendees. Could be. I don't remember the count. But it was slim. <laughs> like we were pulling see? people in off the street. As I recall, to come in. <laughs> All right, you guys yeah, see we, the we monitor? All right, do you see that picture? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's our booth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Those, <laughs> yeah, those guys were young. Boy, <laughs> you have some blackmail material here, Emil. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty good. I got that from Sarah and Lens. They've got more pictures, oh, but yes. that's one of you guys. Yeah, that was a that was that's a real cool. milestone for the business, even though they didn't have a very successful turnout of in a, of people uh, customers. Yeah. But I, he says, and I don't remember. He says a bunch of us got in a room, and he says I was in the room, and we talked about converting this thing into the trade association, which happened very shortly afterwards. Right, yeah. Because really it became a business to business. It was really just, you know, it was, a, it was those business guys talking to each other. That that was the value of it, I thought, in hindsight, you know. We were hoping for a lot of, you know, attendees, customers to come in and learn about us. but And there weren't that many. You know, just having the time to spend to talk, you know, talk with people like yourself. Uh, I know we met the guys from KFFL there there that year and just about everybody else we all got talking because there wasn't anything else to do <laughs> do you remember <laughs> i've asked this question to everybody who was there there was a guy called joe hart and he had a football fantasy football magazine called the view do you remember him yes they were from miami weren't they is that yes, what it was i remember joe yeah really? there, were, there were two guys do who yeah, was the other guy was not, i can't recall the other guy I don't want to say it, but they... Uh, but a curly-haired guy. But I, I do recall them being out of Miami, and they did the view. You're I right. I remember You're that, right. yes. I remember Bob and I would just joke about it, Bob uh, Harris, because they had the um, expert all the line. They were asking questions, and whenever he answered a question, he would pop up his magazine and, and be talking and answering his <laughs> questions, <laughs> holding his magazine. <laughs> right. Yeah. 22 years later, I can't get that out of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> that's from the whole convention that's what stands out huh that's one of them that. that's yeah. that's one of them yeah i'll have to find yeah. him i just want to find him just to talk to him but he didn't last too long so what was the what was the most memorable or some of the most memorable things about being in this business and playing fantasy football all those years uh you know so kelly mentioned the friendship certainly we have some great friends today that we've met, and we met back in the day. They were customers, but you know, the one thing they, they all had in common was they used to call us on the phone. 
And they weren't shy about calling and just asking us directly about information. And then we got to know them more. And, and we've really become good friends with these people. And they're all, they, they live in various uh, states. You know, that, that was a big deal uh, to me. And then I always, when I look back at the business, too, I think about how far it has come um, to where we are today with things. I mean, back in the, we've talked a lot about it here. You know, there wasn't the information that there is today that was at your fingertips, certainly. And um, the games, certainly the games that you've started in Vegas and all, uh, the games. I mean, uh, we didn't see things like that happening. But we did think that there was a lot of upside to this industry because um, the people who were playing fantasy football, the one thing that struck us all the, all the way was that they were so obsessed about playing it. They, they just were really into it. They weren't, you know, they weren't or anything like that. I wouldn't put them in that category, but they were just obsessed with playing. And certainly everybody wanted to win. I mean, you, 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 you really don't play fantasy football unless you're serious about winning, you know. So there's no, hey, let me, let, let me just throw in a couple hundred bucks and lose it, you know. It's people wanted to win. Yeah, I think also, too, to me, it's, it's amazing the technology. I guess I never thought back when we started that, People would be walking around with phones in their pockets and pulling them out and, and, and uh, uh, putting their lineup in for the week. Um, you know, the, to me, it's just it, it is amazing how how far this this whole industry has come. And 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 Amo, really, you you have been one that's uh, really led to the charge. Oh, I don't know about that, but I tried. Oh, you have. I, I yeah. do, Amo. You're an honest guy, and I do remember this one phone call. This is way way back when you were starting your magazine. And we would tell you some stuff that we were thinking about putting in our magazine for the next year. And you said, wait, 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 don't tell me because I'll steal it. <laughs> <laughs> and you were, but you were honest. You were honest. You were, you were very honest. honest. Well, when we started, when Lenny and I started the WCFF, within like, well, first year, second year, third year, there was like 10 high stakes contests. So, hey, you know, that's part of the business, yeah. you know. Yeah, unless exactly. it's somehow copyright. Yeah. So, do you guys still play today? Yes. Yeah. yeah, but just one league. One league. We still have the yeah. same. We kept the same name over the years. Which same one? team name. Same team name. So Which? it's uh, it's the East Street Kings. Yeah. So uh, and and uh, we've had that since you know 1985. Wow. So what what commissioner platform do you guys use? Right now, um, we'll, ESPN. we'll use ESPN. Yeah, but it's we don't run the league, and and uh, we're in. It's a bunch of young guys now, so, but it's still fun. We we do enjoy it. We just show up and draft, and that's about it anymore. Yeah. Oh, well, that's you guys have had a fantastic career. I'm. I'm. There's a lot of things I didn't know. Uh, so great, we got this on film, <clears throat> or digital, whatever they call it these days. And you had a great career. You mm -hmm. truly both pioneers of fantasy sports and appreciate you uh, well we certainly didn't time. plan on it <laughs> yes. this this wasn't the career this was I, I tell people this was the accidental career yes. you know the idea at the beginning was just to compile information so that we go on the draft the next year and as we told you one thing led to another and <laughs> that's what happened I've heard similar stories I've done about 13 of these now and two or three of them are the same way they started doing a newsletter for their league or something like that, and then the next step was, boom, you know, they got into the business. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was scary. I mean, we had to put our houses up Yeah. Huh? Have to secure a bank loan. Oh. Uh, you know, we, had to, we, we both had jobs that we quit <laughs> to go do this, and to uh, the uh, d dismay of our families, of course, they were on board, but you can imagine when we were telling others <laughs> about doing this, they said, what in the world have you done? But, you know, it's it worked out. <laughs> not easy to be pi uh, pioneers and be uh, entrepreneurs, that's for sure. No, it no. really isn't. Yeah. I, uh, I, I made my first mag in 90, which is probably similar to the one you guys made in 86. And it was a spiral round thing. And I did the same thing. I did, I did a mail order through a Pro Football Weekly ad, and I took it to a couple of stores, and they sold like mad at the stores. Yeah. And my, yeah. my, my dad came over. Uh, my month after the season, and I, I, I was in the hallway, and I said, "Dad, look, look what I created." And he, <laughs> he looked at it, and he goes, six words, 
How much money did you lose? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Exactly. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah. Way yeah, to go. Yeah. Way to go. <laughs> you know, one of the other things I was just thinking about, you know, we were so naive early on um, with the magazine. You know, we would not accept ads for the, oh. you know, for probably the first five years uh, because we thought it would take away from the content of the magazine. And then we realized, wait a second, they say the formula is that you make the money off the ads and you try to break even with your printing costs on, a, on distribution. And so we ended up taking ads. Well, good for you, especially if you took a loan out. You want to might, <laughs> might as well push that envelope. That's Fantastic. right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, gosh, thank yeah. you so much. Any other final thoughts that you popped into your heads? No, we no. just we thank you for yeah. featuring us here today. That's uh, we we thought our fantasy days were long gone. We never yeah. expected to be talking like this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, a couple of years well, ago. <laughs> We did a thing called Fantasy Football Summit where we did videos of people for draft preparation. And I would get on and get them ready and get the f things working. And a couple of times I started talking to these guys for like 40 minutes and I had the recording on. And I thought, wait a minute here. You know, there's no real history of the beginnings of fantasy sports and all the people that would did it, all the businesses. What a great way to do it with video because uh, then you get the emotion yeah. and you, you, you get things that they recall like, like Joe Hart. You know, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, pardon? Um, what I was just going to say, Emil, was that if you want to just go ahead and email us your uh, your mailing address, I'll get a copy of that first oh, cool. uh, publication to you. Fantastic. Yeah, that's, uh, I'll, I'll get that out to you. I'll have this link probably tomorrow sometime with the, with the story. I'll, I'll do the intro, I guess, unless you guys want to do the intro. But I'm not really a writer, so if you when you see it, you can edit it for me. Oh, Okay. Because there'll be like a two, three hundred word intro on you guys with the video. Oh, okay. You guys were a little choppy in there, so that's just it's okay though, because the audio was darn good. So when you watch it, you'll you'll be seeing yourself like that. But uh, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Fantastic, yeah, well, guys. Again. It was wonderful to see you again. Yeah, yeah, great to see you. Thank you. Great story and uh, congratulations on your careers. Okay, thank thanks. Thanks, you. You, you too. You too.